Oh, okay. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Why is there a three-way switch in here? Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. I've invited you back into my home to correct a lighting issue that's been plaguing us for almost two years, since we moved into this house. Now what's taking place here is I have three distinct lighting zones in three distinct rooms, none of which should be interconnected from a switching standpoint. However, the living room switch is overriding both the stairway on the other side of the wall and the girl's upstairs bedroom. So when I turn this off, the stair light comes on and the girl's bedroom light comes on. At this point, I haven't thought deeply about it. I don't know what's happening. I wanted to invite you in and we'll troubleshoot this from scratch. So right now, we're gonna be starting in the living room. And I'm gonna pull each switch out of the wall to see what's taking place. I think what probably happened was the homeowner replaced some three-way switches and got confused about which wires to put where. And now we've got pass-through hots that are being switched. Ah, kind of painted to the wall. Get that pulled out. Ooh, okay. So I have a dead end three way here. Let me, right now, we don't know what this switch over here does. So I'm gonna open it up and find out if it's in any way on the opposite side of the living room, a three way switch for this overhead light. This could be where the trouble is. Part of what's difficult about troubleshooting a situation like this, it's, it's quite possible and likely that there are layered issues and if there's more than one issue, then it can be difficult to resolve because the symptoms of the problem are not gonna point clearly to one type of problem. It could be that there are two or three layered issues that are then disguising each other and complicating the facts. So again, at this point, we have no idea what this switch does. The space beyond me here was a 1970s edition. So this switch may not go to anything anymore. All right, we have a dead end three wire as well. I think what's taking place is our hot is in the light. That's also then where we have a three wire coming down to each switch, if I had to guess. And again, this switch doesn't presently seem to be doing anything. But let's explore a little bit more. Okay. Ooh, there's load. Look at that. What's happening? <clears throat> when I tap those wires, there's a spark. There's a load on these. How about this? Nothing. Let's see if I switch this position of the switch here. Light turns off. Is there? the load has been removed. Hmm. Everything's going crazy. I have to pull out the multimeter. Huh. <clears throat> Here we go. So I'm going to test the box. I'm going to put it, the one prong right in the screw hole. That's 123 volts consistent on the white wire, 13 on that black, which is negligible, and 122 on this hot. I'm flipping this switch over here to see how it affects this box. Coming back for another round of testing. So now that one's been de-energized. This one's still hot. 
and this one is still de-energized. So it's possible that's my hot and these are my travelers. Let's investigate over here again. So that's hot. That's hot. And this one's de-energized. I switch it. And this one's hot. This one's de-energized. And that one is energized. And let's pull one of the wires off here and see if that holds true. Pull off the common. The colored screw that's different than the other two on a three-way switch is called the common. So we've got two brass screws and one oddball colored screw. And let's see what's happening now. 122 volts. Nothing. Nothing. I'm gonna go a little bit further here <clears throat> before we take that light down and open up the stairway three-way switch. I think we're gonna find that the trouble is in the light because there are not enough wires in this room to account for hots and pass-throughs and neutrals. So there's a junction somewhere. I'm hoping that junction is accessible and I'm guessing the junction is in the light. And it's real common when there's a complexity of whites and blacks, some of which whites may not be used as neutrals, but may actually be switch legs and returns for a homeowner to mix that up. It's time to take down the light, see if the problem is up there. So I've reconnected the wiring at this switch because I want the light to be operable just to give me a little more information. Now we're gonna take down the light. Go ahead, I know you're doing it. Rag on grandma's stool, be my guest. Okay. This is, an, I think, a genuinely older fixture. Let's see if I can hack my way into it. Rumor has it that when this house was built in 1938, a European princess took her crystal chandeliers and shipped them across the sea in order to rescue them from Hitler and his rage across Europe. Mm. Uh, there's some legit 1938 crystal chandeliers in this house. Story is good for the kids anyways. I think this is how I get in there. There it is. Hmm. Nope. I guessed wrong. There's only one white and one black wire in that box. And nothing else. I'm gonna have to look for a junction somewhere else. <clears throat> Alright, time to keep looking. We need a junction box. It's got pass-through wiring that we can find what's going on. You better not have J-boxed everything in the fixture above the stairs. Be really disappointing. So here we are at the top of the stairs. This switch has currently been disabled by the presence of the living room light being turned on. We've got a four wire coming out of the wall and finally we found one extra conductor. That could be part of the solution. We have a red, white, black, and it's almost like it's a brown, but maybe it's also black. Yeah, it's a black. So two blacks, a red and a white. Not enough information yet. Keep looking. So now we're at the end of the hallway upstairs. This switch has never, to our knowledge, operated anything. 
It's a total mystery switch, but it's likely that if we were wiring this house up from scratch, we'd want a three or four way switch here by the master bedroom door to control the hallway and stairway lights. Wow, same thing, nothing but three conductors. Not enough to crack our mystery. Let's see if we've got any juice at this location. Pull out the digital multimeter, plug one into the ground screw. We've got 120 volts there. 44 on that terminal and 124 there. So we've got some juice. We've truly got some juice. Why is it inoperable? Hmm, keep looking. Still not enough con conductors. There is a set or more of wiring connections that is, as of yet, hidden from our view. Oh, okay. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Why is there a three-way switch in here? That's kind of interesting. There's something going on here. This is a single location switch, but it's a three-way and the wires are therefore misconnected. We've got a problem here. Let's just see what we're, let's just pull, pull some of this apart and see what we're up against. Still not enough information, but we found a couple interesting things. This should just be a single pull switch. It's a one location switch. Having a three location switch and three wires connected, there's something going on. So let's actually just Again, put that in our grounding port. So we've got a reference, 31 volts, nothing. 123, hmm, 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 hmm. Let's try, okay, hopefully nothing blows up here. <clears throat> I'm gonna give myself just even a little separation here. You never know. Light comes on. Mm-hmm. Look at that. So if we do this, maybe, just maybe, we've solved one of the issues. Look at that. Now we've got an extra conductor there that we don't know it's going, going to. But now we've got a steady on-off that seems to be functioning independently of the other things. Let's see what we're getting on this read. 31, that infamous 31, 32. So it's probably reading some stray voltage through something, but <sighs> mystery conductor. So let's think about this. In, in this case, we have, to, we have to be creative. We have to assume that maybe hots and neutrals are not traveling together. Maybe hots and neutrals have been dissected. What? Ooh, what? What? 122. Okay, I was just wasn't getting a good good ground. Hmm. Wild. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna straighten this out and I'm gonna make it a constant hot by connecting it, plugging it into the back of this switch. There's a port. Come on, baby. Because uh. <clears throat> we don't need a second switch leg. So now this red wire has just been permanently energized off of this white. The girl's bedroom, it's working right now. We'll see if it gets disrupted as we continue to probe. Okay, all right, okay. What we've done here is we've just found that there was a switched wire in the girl's bedroom light. We've put it on constant hot. So that means what was turning on and off is now combined with the hot. They're one, they're simultaneous. It's passing the hot through. We call that a hot pass. And it seems like we've now corrected 
Again, not an inf enough information to know exactly what's going on, but we've corrected the stairway three-way switching. It's now operating properly and independently. We're going to do a couple other tests in that we're going to turn off the girl's bedroom light, we're going to turn on the living room light, we're going to change the scenario around our stairway switching and see if it still works to make sure that each zone is functioning independently. So we still have mysteries, but we might be getting closer. Okay. Cautiously, I think we have hot conductors over here. Let's retest and see. 120 volts. 120 volts. 12. All right, so we're going to touch things. No sparking. Nothing. We don't seem to be affecting anything. So we still have a mystery here. So all the lighting zones are working now, but we have a mystery switch location one and a mystery switch location two upstairs. I'm going to probe a little further and see if I can get them to work or cap them off, tuck them back and blanket. Okay. So let's just pop one of these off and try something different. We're back upstairs at the end of the hallway. And there's a chance that this switch is going to work if we can get it reconfigured and it's on the hallway lights. But also a chance nothing's going to happen. <laughs> Nothing. There's power here, but it's not feeding through anything. Okay. Don't know what's going to happen. We're going to tap it here. Ooh. Nothing. 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 Let's... Um, Let's leave it on the hot terminal and see if anything becomes energized. Okay, so that is hot. Tuck it in there. Now we've energized it. Let's see. Come back to our mystery switch at the end of the hallway. Nothing, nothing. Shoot. Nothing. See, what's going to happen is if you've got um, two wires that when connected supply a load, like even a small load, like a light bulb or anything that's on further downstream on the circuit, when those two wires connect, you're going to get a little arc, a little spark, a little visible audible arc between the conductors as they come together. That's the same arc that you hear inside a switch. If you go uh, in a quiet environment and put your ear up to a regular light switch in a home, and you've got a substantial load on that switch, let's say a chandelier of bulbs, and you flip that on, most of what you're going to hear is the pop of the switch settling into place, but you're also going to hear almost a sizzle and a crisp arc of the electrical connection being made, and that's kind of what I'm looking for here to see if there's any load, anything that's connected and dependent on that switch and the wiring connection, and the answer is no, at least nothing that's on right now. Well. It's a mystery. I don't like leaving this much unknown, but my plan is to rewire the home. Ultimately, I've regained functionality, independent and proper functionality of the girl's upstairs bedroom, of the hallway stairway light, and of the living room light. Everything's now working properly. The only two loose ends I have are two mystery switches that I'm gonna cap and blank. All that's gonna be corrected when the home is rewired. Right now, we're up and running and we're code compliance. So the only thing that I changed in this entire environment is a hot pass in my daughter's bedroom switch. And now everything's functioning properly. If you think you know what took place in this situation, drop a line to me in the comments and I'll definitely give it a shot. Bear in mind, my attic is floored. Often this is what you're gonna find in an older home when you're making repairs. It could be a little dissatisfying, but at the end of the day, the customer's happy to pay if functionality is restored and everything you touched is right, and everything you found is code compliant. Still a bit of a mystery, but it works. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.